Let's see what we brought home from the solar recycler. Sun Power 305s. Somewhere in the ballpark of 50 volt panels. So they'll work great on the 12 volt system with a proper voltage regulator. We have a 2004 Mercedes Sprinter badged as a Freightliner. Uh, we've put an extensive solar rack up on top of it. I'd like to give you a tour of it today. Before having the bodywork done, we did uh, spray foam the interior walls so it's insulated real well. Come on inside with me. Spray foam in the doors makes a big difference on how the doors close. Makes a nice solid thud. We've got some shelving installed. The air conditioner is vented through the floor so there's no air conditioner hanging out the back window or side of the van looking horrible. It's completely stealthy from the outside. Don't know it's there except the grass blows around underneath the van quite a bit when it's turned on. Okay, so we'll talk about the components of this van starting from the top down. We've got four solar panels. They're Sun Power 305s. Uh, that gives us 1220 watts total power. They are wired with two panels in series and then each of those Two units are tied together in parallel, um, so we're incorporating both lines of thinking there. This wire them in series and wire them in parallel. 10 gauge wire coming in from the solar panels. So the EPEVER charge controller takes care of our solar inputs to the batteries. Uh, it has a shunt then connected for battery management, keeping an eye on our available power. The magnum inverter also has a battery, ma battery management feature which is mounted right here to the battery battery temperature sensor at least battery management is over here that goes with that it will charge the batteries run all the house devices on the power on the shore power and if uh, the shore power isn't strong enough to supply everything we're trying to do it will also pull off the solar power simultaneously that's the hybrid feature of it uh, these batteries are just temporary they're AGM batteries we're putting lithium in this van. AGM should be vented through the floor for any off-gassing and of course any battery should be mounted. These are not mounted yet. When we get the lithium batteries in here everything will be mounted. There will be no need for venting and it will take up a lot less space and weigh left, roughly one-third the weight. Coming out of our fuse here we're going to the step-down converter that will feed all of our 12 volt units. Uh, the reason for that 24 volt that battery bank system is a more efficient inverter. Um, most of the 12 volt inverters run about 85% efficiency. This one is 94% efficient. So that 9% right off the top, or if you will, just add 9% to any power demands you might need, uh, is, is a step we didn't want to do, being that our power de demands are pretty heavy with the air conditioner and hoping to keep this van comfortable all day long, all summer long in Florida. A small fuse block here. Right now it's feeding the Chinese diesel heater. Uh, as you can see, we've got some 12 volt outlets and USB power ports just installed as a, you know, everything's right there convenient in one location right now. There's not a floor plan designed for this van. If you have something in mind and want to shoot us some ideas, please do. Uh, of course, it's going to charge the batteries when we're not pulling so much power demand and we're just plugged in. Epever's largest that I could find MPPT solar charge controller. This is connected to four 305 watt solar panels on the roof. So we've got a total of 1220 watts of solar on this tiny little camper van. Uh, that will run the air conditioner all day long and on a good sunny day it will charge the batteries uh, equally uh, using the air conditioner for only half the power that we're pulling down from the solar system. Solar system is pulling down 51 volts. It's charging at 25 volts, so 18 amps charging. If I turn the air conditioner on for a little bit here, we'll see how much draw that takes. There it is. It kicked in and jumped right up to 13, 14, 15 amps and climbing still a little bit. 
The wheel wells in the back are the limiter as to how wide the cargo can be, so I'm keeping everything as close to the wall as those wheel wells. Uh, and of course these carpet tiles can pull right out if a person wanted to carry something dirty. Pull those out, save your carpet, put it back in afterwards. We still have the D-rings in this van, so you can tie everything down, whatever load you're putting in here. Uh, we've got just about 13 feet of cargo space from the back doors to the back of the seats. So you can put a full three pallets in here, uh, slide them all in through the back door. The height is limited at four feet because of the bottom edge of this air conditioner, but of course, uh, you know, the pallet could be a little taller than that if it weren't that tall all the way out to the sides. Underneath the seat here, we have the, the uh, famous Chinese diesel heater. I just put one vent on it so that we can blow it into the back if we're using it for a camper, blow it into the front if we're using it for a, a, you know, a, a travel day. Put some USB ports up here in the dash and some 12 volt ports because the, the factory one, of course, was no good. More USB ports. Display monitor for a backup camera. And as you can see, for a 2004 van, it cleans up pretty good. Not quite a brand new car, but it looks close. It's, it's all right. A couple more things need to be done, and it'll be looking real good. Oh goody.